Good afternoon from Jerusalem. This is the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs on day 12 of the uh, what's called in this very difficult war, the Swords of Iron operation, which is the counterterrorism war that has uh, the war that's been foisted upon us uh, following an unprecedented massacre of Israeli children, women, men, and soldiers exactly 12 days ago uh, on Shabbat Simchat Torah. Since then, we've been bringing you updates, analysis, assessment, uh, and commentary, trying to create context and perspective, which is very, uh, it's pressing, it's urgent, and particularly important today on day 12, as uh, many of you uh, from across the seas, our friends, family, and colleagues from across the sea, witnessed together with us uh, overnight uh, a Palestinian Islamic Jihad, either misfire or intentional fire on a major hospital in the Gaza Strip that the Hamas, uh, understandably, from their point of view, blamed Israel for and generated a tremendous, a, re a, a tremendous echo effect in the international media. We're going to talk about that together with our esteemed JCPA colleague, Yoni ben Menachem, a great Arab affairs analyst, uh, who's been with us for many years, and of course, our co-host, my co-host here, Lieutenant Colonel Reserve, Maurice Hirsch, international uh, attorney and former prosecutor in Judea and What is the update today, day 12, uh, Maurice, before we turn over to Yoni from, for a deeper analysis on this, on what we're calling the, the Gaza Hospital Disinformation uh, Act, which is a critically important moment in the war. So let's just give that, over, that overview again, just for the viewers who are joining us for the first time. We're talking about an, a concentrated assault carried out on the 7th of October, in the morning of the 7th of October, Shabbat Simchat Torah. Over 3,000 terrorists invade Israel, um, swarm 30 different communities and army bases. They murder over 1,400 people. They take over 200 people hostages. They rape, pillage, um, decapitate babies, soldiers, people, um, mothers, children, elderly, disabled, all murdered and all kidnapped. That's the situation that we're starting. Um, they accompany this assault with a massive barrage of missiles and rockets that they fire into the communities and since into the wider Israel. We're talking about over 7,000 rockets that have been fired in the last 12 days by the terrorists, many of them into the heartland of Israel's civilian population. Tel Aviv, Herzliya, Rishon Etzion, Batyam, the whole uh, um, coastal area pretty much has come under attack as far as Haifa in the north uh, uh, from the attacks on, on the first days. Um, at the same time, we also still have 3,500 people injured, some still fighting for their lives um, in, in hospitals. Many then of those bodies uh, um, that were killed are still unidentified because of the really the barbarous, uh, uh, barbarian activities of uh, the terrorists who burned the bodies alive. So the millions of the thousands, 400 dead, that number is very likely to go up. No, that includes the, the, the bodies that are unidentified. That isn't going to go up at the moment. The number will go up. Cautiously, I would say, I would hope it wouldn't go up, but because of those in hospital um, that are still uh, fighting for their lives. Um, that's the general uh, overview of the situation the at the moment in the hospitals. Um, the hospital, the hospital. And, and the hospitals, obviously, no one knows what the situation of the hospitals is. We don't know whether they are alive, whether they yesterday, are there. Yesterday, the Abu Obeida, the spokesperson of the military wing of Hamas, he said officially on video that uh, they have all the factions together, 250 Israeli hostages, and that Hamas holds to hundreds of them. That's exactly what we've been discussing yeah. in the previous days, uh, uh, Yoni. The number of hostages is unclear at the moment. No one knows exactly what the number is. That's why Israel is saying that it's just over 200. We're not sure of an exact number. We know that some are held by Hamas, some are held by uh, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, some are held fund. by the Popular Fund yeah. for the Liberation of Palestine, an organization connected to part of the Palestine Liberation Organization, the PLO, the organization headed by Yasser Arafat, an organization, a terrorist organization that is also funded by the PA and by the PLO. Direct funding from the PA, PLO, Mahmoud Abbas to the terrorists who murdered Rina Schnorr a few years ago in the terrorist attack and are now, that were now part of that violent 
uh, um, assault on the communities and is now holding uh, um, hostages in the Gaza Strip. The main event, obviously, of the, of the last two days, one, uh, uh, um, two events, really, but they're connected to the same original event. Um, we're talking about the, the incident in the Al Ahali hospital in Gaza. Um, what, what, what appears to have happened there quite clearly is that rockets were fired by terrorists. Some of the rockets uh, um, fell in the Gaza Strip. One of them fell on the hospital itself. Now, as we said yesterday, statistically, one in four of the rockets of Hamas and the terrorists in Gaza falls in the Gaza Strip. And that's an historical statistic. That's and a historical that statistic. That's, for years. that's happened all the time. So we're talking about somewhere in the region of 1,800 Hamas PLO, this, uh, was PLO a, PLO rockets. this was not a missile of Hamas. It was a missile of no, uh, Islamic Jihad. So, 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 Islamic Jihad. So, so we'll get to that in a second, yeah. if, you're, if you'll allow me, uh, Yoni. Uh, that, that have fallen in the Gaza Strip and have most likely killed dozens, if not hundreds, of Palestinians that the terrorists themselves have killed. The rocket that was fired was fired by Palestinian Islamic Jihad, ostensibly. That's a, 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 the argument. At the same time, just minutes before, Hamas said that they were going to fire um, their longest range uh, 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 rockets and target Haifa. That attack never happened on Haifa yesterday. And recordings released by the, um, by the IDF spokesman and by the IDF seem to, suggest, seem to present two Hamas terrorists discussing with, between themselves as to what exactly happened. And it's not clear whether they're saying, well, it's good that they're blaming Islamic Jihad because they haven't yet caught on that it's us, or whether they're saying that it was Islamic Jihad and, uh, um, and, and that's the follow-up that came on. Whatever it is, that incident happened in the Gaza Strip as a result of a missile fired by the terrorists and not by, by Israel. The second incident, the knock-on incident, obviously that, 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 that followed that, that disaster, because it is a disaster, let's, let's put it in context, with the, with, no. when, when innocents the next die, um, that's a disaster. The, in, the next one is uh, the cancelling of the, the Biden uh, um, meeting with the Arab summit in uh, Jordan, uh, the Arab summit in Jordan with, uh, with King Abdallah, with, uh, with Assisi, and with the participation of Mahmoud Abbas, the, possibly the head terrorist, um, or one of the head terrorists. Um, that meeting is cancelled, not by the Biden administration, but by Abbas and, and, and the, the Arab leaders. Um, Biden is now in Israel and is meeting with, uh, and has met with uh, um, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's uh, uh, um, due to meet with other people and conduct other uh, um, meetings with, uh, around the area. Um, and we'll see how those uh, develop. That's the update as it stands at the moment. Excellent, Maurice. You've raised a number of very important points, uh, uh, points of update. We want to bring in uh, Yoni ben Menachem. Uh, not only in Arab affairs and an Arabist uh, expert himself, having he interviews, he's been interviewing on tens of uh, Arab networks on behalf of Israel uh, every week, uh, and five or six or seven every day, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> no. yeah, but so they know Yoni is the face and the voice uh, of Israel, one of the uh, faces the voice of Israel in Arabic to the Arab world. And this is from the point of view of fighting disinformation and propaganda that has been advanced, it continues to be uh, uh, metastasized on behalf of Hamas and their Iranian regime handlers. Uh, this is very, very important. And let's go back to the, uh, the, hospital. the hospital issue. This is a major turning point in the war from the point of view of disinformation yeah. and the strategy by Hamas of disinformation. They took, so Yoni, help us understand, the, the, the rocket fell and according to the idea, of, uh, according to our technological uh, uh, analysis by uh, by the idea, this rocket fell from the Islamic Jihad, fired by Islamic Jihad, as uh, Maurice reported here, on the hospital itself. And there's incontrovertible evidence that was brought this morning in English while well, our friends in America were sleeping uh, in English to scores of journalists that prove beyond any doubt that it could not have fallen, it could not have been fired from uh, from the Israel air. No, more than that, well, activated there is the a, this development that you may be not aware of yet, but uh, apparently the Israeli Channel uh, 12 TV, they had a camera in uh, the Tibot, 
uh, and the, the camera ca captured the, the barrage of the rockets or the missiles that were shot by the Islamic Jihad, and they have it on camera, the barrage and one rocket or one missile falling on the hospital, everything on camera. So they found it today and they broadcasted it, and you know, we could maybe take it from uh, uh, from the social media and, and show it to the people. That is, you don't need now intelligence proofs because it's on camera from channel 12. Yeah. So this is the great thing. Now, not only that, Israel, I think, in my opinion, had a, a big victory today in the whole uh, thing called Aspara, uh, because uh, these evidence are, are crucial, you know, and uh, the most important thing is that President Biden, he said that he takes, he adopts the Israeli version, not the version of the uh, of the Palestinians, and he put the blame on, on the terrorist organization. This is very important because now the situation is completely uh, changed, and uh, Israel also uh, gave all the intelligence material and these uh, pictures from Channel 12, they gave it to other leaders in the Western world uh, to, to prove to them that the Palestinians are lying. And this is a big blow, I think, to the Palestinian propaganda. And this is why it's very important also what we are doing now in the uh, Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, because these briefings, they help us to bring the truth to the world, because this, the lines and the disinformation of Palestine is not something new, but today they lost in the battle because what uh, President Biden said is a big victory for Israel and for Israeli Asbana. I, I would argue, we, we should argue, we, we do have to admit, the rockets fell overnight. There were 11 or 12 hours that CNN, among others, were reporting automatically, reflexively, based on what the Hamas were saying. And, and this is a very black day for the international media and CNN, as uh, former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett mentioned on, you know, in his Twitter account and his video, he said to them, shame on you for not vetting the information <laughs> other than you know, Hamas terror. Not, 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 not only CNN. Almost every single UN organization similarly jumped on that bandwagon, condemning Israel, condemning the attack. Um, and even when they had the courage to correct, they never condemned the terrorists. But you know, from the journalistic point of view, uh, just to continue what you said, and you're, you're absolutely right, because you know why it's a big journalistic failure? Because everybody in Gaza Strip, you know, the, the, the rockets and the missiles of the Islamic Jihad, they have many functions. And in the last war, if you remember last summer when the previous prime minister and the IDF made an operation against the Islamic Jihad, Hamas set up the fence. If you remember, there were a few missiles at, at that uh, round of fighting of the Islamic Jihad who fell in the Gaza Strip and killed Palestinians. And the international media knows about it. They know yeah. that the, uh, the, uh, these rockets and missiles of Islamic Jihad have malfunctions all the time. So when Israel came and said, this is Islamic Jihad main function missile, they should have checked that. And they didn't do that. Yeah, they just right. went out and attacked yeah. Israel. One of the problems is, and, and Yoni, uh, I want our viewers to know that uh, I had the honor of working uh, uh, with, uh, Yoni was the director general of uh, Israel's major broadcast uh, center uh, called the Israel Broadcasting Authority, which I had did. the I did. IBA, but well, the IBA was also known as the English News. And I want right. to know you were head of the entire authority, not right. just the IBA. I was the uh, I was a reporter and then an anchor at uh, at, I, at the English language service in those years, and then was actually asked uh, by a former government of Israel to sit as a member of the board uh, when Yoni was. So Yoni knows media very very well. He knows the Arab world very very well, and it. What we're doing here at the JCPA, by the way, is right upstairs is what's called a counter disinformation media center in Arabic, in Farsi, and in English. And we're issuing videos and statements and content all the time into uh, social networks uh, in all three languages and all three cultures in order to counter this disinformation. That's one of the key objectives we have as a uh, diplomacy, uh, media, and research policy institute. We're, we're sort of a, a hybrid of all three, and that's where our experts like uh, Maurice and, and Yoni fit in so well because they do all three uh, right. of those. Uh, Yoni, uh, Maurice, of course, came from Palestinian Media Watch where he ran their legal affairs. So we're, we're really, uh, we really converge here between yeah. all three. And, and this is a very important point here, having said that as background, is that the deception and the disinformation 
is just as important to the Hamas as massacring children. That is their strategy. And, and I think the West, uh, many of the West, uh, notwithstanding the, the more educated folks on this call, have been kidnapped by Hamas, which in Crete and by the, all the more so by the Palestinian Authority, who have become understood as legitimate international actors uh, in the last 33, 34 years since the Oslo Accords, even the Hamas. Let's remember that President Obama was the first major leader of the free world to offer to mediate diplomatically between the Hamas leadership and the state of Israel right. uh, back in 2015-16 uh, during the Kerry when uh, uh, Secretary Kerry, Secretary uh, of uh, Secretary of State Kerry was in the peace process. So this is a very important, the media strategy, the mendacious media strategy of Hamas is an a priori idea that, that we all have to be very uh, cognizant of. You know, this, should, this should really be the wake up call also for the media, for the international organizations that the organization called the Ministry of Health in Gaza is a Hamas organ. It's not there to provide welfare and, and health care for the Palestinian uh, people. It's there as part of that propaganda arm of the Palestinian Authority. They were the ones who led the onslaught yesterday saying that Israel had attacked the hospital and that 500 people had been killed. Both of those facts have proved to be unfounded. Now, the question is whether the both the international uh, journalists and the international organizations will now no longer attribute any type of credibility to that uh, um, organization. What is most also important is that uh, the PA, the chairman of the PA, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, is encouraging this sort of incitement against Israel. He knows that it's, it's not true, this lie that was established as a lie that Israel uh, dropped a bomb or a missile on the, the hospital. He knows that, but yet he goes and declare uh, three days of mourning for the people who got killed. And uh, if you see on the on the uh, Palestinian, on the PA media, uh, they are just incited against Israel with lies. And you know, they, are, they know it's a lie. What is interesting that the people of Gaza, they are now sure that it's Islamic Jihad because they understand that they were deceived and they also have previous uh, experience with Islamic Jihad because they know that the missiles, the missiles are, I don't want to say the word, but malfunction and they are yeah. dropping on their heads all the time. Whenever there's a fighting going on, a round of fighting, they, they keep, uh, the Islamic Jihad keeps taking them. By the way, what, now, what the did, rumor, yeah. what's interesting, I haven't been able to establish it, but there's a strong rumor on the Palestinian uh, street in Gaza by the uh, Fatah activists who are saying that this was done deliberately by the Islamic Jihad. The attack on the hospital. Why did they do that? Why did they because that? Iran asked them to topple the visit of, uh, to torpedo the visit of uh, President Biden in the area because uh, Biden was supposed to create a new axis against Iran with this Arab summit in Jordan, with uh, uh, Egypt and Jordan. And yeah, this is a rumor that is, now, among the people in the street, in, in the Gaza Street, among Fatah activists, but I cannot exclude them. You know, there are many surprises. Uh, you know, uh, when the whole thing started, uh, we, uh, I heard from some people who had the podcast, Dan and me, and uh, they told us that uh, this whole thing is to, uh, to try to sabotage the normalization process between Israel and Saudi Arabia. That and at first, nobody believes that, but now, it's already a proven fact because uh, the Americans also they have some intelligence information that is uh, uh, the Iranian yeah. involvement sending their proxies, yeah. whether it be exactly. Hamas in the so, south, he's battered in the north to attack us. So That's now Iran, which, Iran knows how to place the chase game, right? That's right. So they might have been doing some sort of a move uh, through this Islamic Jihad. This is a possibility yeah. that we cannot Men exclude. mention to, uh, Yoni, to our viewers. And it, it, Jews and Public Affairs has been very uh, prominent on this point, that the Islamic, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad is a branch force and a branch office of the IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, in Tehran. They receive their salaries, they receive their instructions, they receive their inspirations. Even though PIJ is a Sunni radical organization, many of them come out of the Fatah, and, and, and started back in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, early right. 80s, uh, right. Ramadan Shala, right. in the early 80s. Yes. But they take their orders directly from 
the uh, the senior leadership in Tehran. They and are, the Revolutionary Guards. They are, yeah, they are they are working very closely. They used to work very closely with uh, Qasem Soleimani, and now they are working with uh, Ismail Kahani, who succeeded him after he was assassinated. That's right. After, okay. after Qasem Soleimani. So the important point that we want to um, convey to you and expose to you all the time is the bloody fingerprints all the time on the ground in Gaza, in Judea and Samaria, Janine, Nablus, and other places of the Iranian regime. They are here, they are in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, they're in Gaza, they're agents. They, they are known to be is Iranian agents have been in the tunnels in Gaza for years. And Yoni, as a matter of fact, you have to read, Yoni wrote a very far reaching report back in 218, which you can find on the JCPA right. website about that initial a uh, far-reaching meeting between Qasem Soleimani, who was assassinated by an American drone in 2020, and the Hamas leadership when they took a pivotal decision to change a direction that led to exactly this massacre with a new strategy of what we would call popular uh, resistance. Uh, resistance and assault, which led to this type of strategic massacre of uh, breaking down the fence. I wanted to make wanted to make that point. The other point that's very important to make regarding the hospital the art is that many in the international media are are in um, uh, are embedded with the Hamas are inside Gaza reporting so they can't very well endanger their own lives right. by reporting objectively and correctly because they'll lose their access to the Hamas and they all want access to the Hamas because of how they make a living and number two they endanger their own lives about uh, writing things that are against the Hamas or the Fatah or the PIJ or some of the other, uh, the P, there's PFLP, there's also PFLP, there are other Fatah Hidals in Gaza. So this is the built-in dilemma for, it shouldn't be a moral dilemma, but it's a professional dilemma for all of these international outlets in the Gaza Strip. That's absolutely right. Now, there's a small difference between the Hamas and the PIJ, the uh, Islamic Jihad. The uh, Islamic Jihad is 100% Iranian proxy. Uh, Hamas, they try to say that they're a little bit more independent, they get the money and the funds and, and, and the weapons from, the, from Iran, but they try to show that they have their own independent decision system. Uh, uh, the, the Islamic Jihad is a, a full proxy of Iran and they, they, they are the one, must not, one must not forget what has happened in the last two years in, the, in the Judea and Samaria. When the Islamic Jihad with the Iran help uh, with the weapons they smuggled from Jordan to the West Bank and with a lot of money, they took over all the Samaria area. They took over uh, Jenin, uh, Nablus, and Tukaren. And uh, what we have today on the ground, we have uh, armed terrorists of the PIJ, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. We're talking about uh, 3,000 armed terrorists only in the West Bank. And, uh, and the PA, and said quietly, they don't have to do anything to prevent this uh, a dangerous phenomenon. So the situation is, is very dangerous because, you know, one of the ideas uh, then is after that Israel will eliminate the Hamas in Gaza Strip is to bring in the uh, uh, Palestinian Authority from the West Bank, from the Samaria, to Gaza to control. But, but this is a funny joke because the PA cannot control the West Bank. They already lost the Samaria area in the north. How will they control also the Gaza Strait? Yeah, that's not no. that, there's a very important point here that Yoni's making. The cancellation of the mini summit in Jordan was very much connected to the point that Yoni Ben, Yoni ben Mahim just made now because Mahmoud Abbas had, has been contacted and pressure to a degree by, by President Biden, the American administration, to, to become the legitimate address in Gaza. And as Yoni said, anybody that knows something about Middle Eastern political culture, about Arab culture, about the way the way realized that if that Mahmoud Abbas would never agree to such an assignment, either against his will or volunteer. You know why? You know why? Because what he wants to do is only stay in power in Ramallah, in the Mukata area, embezzle all the money that they are getting from all over the world, and uh, build, keep building the uh, big economic empire for his two sons, and stay out of trouble, not confront anyone. This way he's safe, he's officially is the ruler, 
But what he is doing is only taking care of his own personal right. interests. He's so building what, 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 what makes the PA's uh, uh, failure to deal with the PIJ also in the north so much more stark than is that we all remember that in 2018, um, Congress passed the Taylor Force Act, which said that the American administration will no longer give direct aid to the Palestinian Authority as long as it continues on with its pay for slave project this project of rewarding terrorists, including the terrorists who participated in the massacre, the murder and the slaughter, the rape and the pillaging uh, um, just uh, uh, 12 days ago. Now, there is a derogation in that law. The derogation in that law allows, and the American administration has used that derogation, to continue providing the Palestinian Authority with security aid. We're talking about $60 million a year going from the US administration directly into the coffers of the Palestinian Authority to help them fight terrorism, which, as you said, Yoni, is just a serious joke. They've done nothing. They do nothing. You know what, what and is, no ability to do it. You know what is worse? These officers of the Palestinian intelligence, the CIA trains them in the United States. All the terrorists also terrorists. have knowledge that they get an espionage. They're spying on Israel, not yeah. the terrorist organization. Yeah. This is the, the spy they, the they are the terrorists themselves. The CIA is training Palestinian Authority terrorists to murder Jews. That's it's, it's, unbe it's an unbelievable reality. But that is the reality of, of the, the Palestinian Authority. And to, to, to even discuss or consider the idea that they will take control also of the Gaza Strip and in, in the aftermath of the war is, I think, something which which needs to be shot down and shot down very, very It's quickly. a very important point in, in uh, connection to everything being regard with regard to everything being said here now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our dear friends. And that is the statement that was made by President al-Sisi of Egypt today that was a very disturbing statement, in a sense, when he called in Arabic to his public to go out to the street. He said, he said I heard him in Arabic, we called millions of Egyptians to go out to the street and express their opposition to the idea that Palestinians will move from Gaza Strip to Sinai. That's what he said. That's and then he had another thing. He said, why Israel is demanding that? Israel should take those Palestinians and put them in the Negev, in the south of Israel. That's right. That was his counter. That was his counter. Now, yeah. there, this is a very important that, statement. That's Arab Brotherhood at its finest. It's a, it, it, at, its, at its finest and its most loyal. And it's a very important point because there is already discussion. There are discussions here, even at the Jerusalem Center, for public affairs and one of our, our uh, areas of excellence, our sweet spot, is in thinking about policy options for the day after. We did that with defensible borders. We did that uh, with Israelophobia. And now uh, we, we actually, uh, I'd like to uh, produce a booklet, a, a, an initiative called Options for Gaza, Judea and Samaria, Israel and the Palestinians, uh, a diplomatic pathway. Because it is clear today, after this, a Holocaust massacre in one day of 1,400 Israelis fit its commensurate to 50,000 Americans in one day, which is 11 9 11s in one day, that there will not be uh, in the foreseeable future another uh, a fully independent Palestinian terror state sitting over Ben Gurion Airport uh, that could attack within minutes uh, so many different uh, Jewish communities in. Uh, Judea and Samaria, as was agreed, by the way, at the Oslo, at Oslo with the PLO, uh, because many people think that Israel just illegally, you know, builds these communities. All of it was in comportment with international law and, and, uh, and the PLO, by the way, in this agreement 34 years ago. But the point here being that we are doing at the JCPA, we're going to be putting together with experts, including the two gentlemen here and other uh, women and men who are great experts in the area of, 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 uh, of community building, of infrastructure, of thinking through possibilities uh, for a new confederal, federal relationship between Israel in the Gaza side, Israel, the Gazans, Egypt, and in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, Israel, uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian controlled areas and Jordan in some constellation. We really have to think through that. We will do that policy study. We would very much call for, uh, for you to support us to, or to name, to sponsor these policy studies. Um, uh, that, you know, at 10 people uh, at $1,800 high, we could produce one of these studies and then we will present them to Israeli government, to the Knesset, to the American administration, to uh, Congress and our friends in Europe. It's very, very important for us to be ahead of the wave in, in thinking through 
uh, these issues without determining exactly what the uh, what the outcome uh, will be. Why don't you take some questions from our friends abroad? Would you excuse me? I have to do it uh, actually a different uh, a network interview outside, but I'm going to turn it over. Uh, Maurice and Yoni, would you answer these questions and comments from our our wonderful uh, friends and family abroad? We're going to see them again tomorrow at uh, four o'clock as well. Yeah, I'm just going to slip back. And maybe we'll also get to uh, the, the main subject of, 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 of the discussion today uh, of how to deal also. Uh, um, is it possible really to eradicate um, uh, Hamas in, it, in its entirety? Um, so let's just uh, look at quickly at the questions to substantiate the rumor that uh, hit the hospital on an Iranian directive to torpedo the Biden summit. Are Iran blamed the US for the Simchatora massacres? So did the PA Abbas. This is Arab Muslimism. Um, okay, that's more of a statement. As Jews are vindicated because there is proof that the missile hit the there. For what I can see, the Arab world is there. Israel's military target it might, is unparalleled these days, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's more of a statement as well. I think we've got more statements than we have got uh, um, questions. Uh, qu questions. Thank you for, uh, um, obviously, the statements are important as well. Um, but we're looking more for, for questions in uh, um, the uh, uh, um, in, in, in the chat, if we may. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, so uh, um, what? let's go on from here, uh, Leonie, and, and discuss really the damage that's being caused by Hamas, how Israel goes forward from here, is it possible really to eradicate the uh, 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 Hamas? Okay, and so as you have been following the news, you are hearing uh, different statesmen of uh, Israeli uh, political uh, national, starting with the Prime Minister Netanyahu and other ministers, and also high ranked officers in the Israeli army, the chief of staff, and other officers uh, declaring uh, uh, or promoting this promise to eradicate Hamas. Yeah. Uh, which I I prefer I rather prefer to call it Hamas ISIS, you know, because it is a, it's established that it's ISIS, and uh, and the way to do that, uh, as they promise, is to have a, a ground invasion into the Gaza uh, Strip. Uh, I I suggest that we take this statement and these promises very uh, carefully because yeah. I think that uh, coming out or the, the source of this statement is a, a big anger rage about a horrible massacre that was uh, committed by the uh, Hamas ISIS terrorists in the communities on the Gaza border. And, and the question is, is this possible? And uh, is, does really the IDF can fulfill uh, such a big task to uh, eradicate Hamas? So here, I'll be on, if I may just, uh, just interject for a second and say, I think there has to be a, a, a differentiation and a distinction between eradicating the Hamas leadership and membership and and together with that its entire military and civilian even infrastructure as opposed to destroying hamas which is really an idea right so uh, let's just uh, make it clear hamas uh, organization or movement they prefer to call it movement is not only a terror organization there are a religious political movement also which is very has very deep roots in the palestinian society if you look at the, the public uh, opinion polls uh, of the Palestinians themselves about the real power of Hamas in Palestinian uh, society, you will find out that at least 40% uh, of Palestinians in Judea and Samaria and the West Bank and, East, uh, and Gaza Strip and East Jerusalem, they support Hamas. Yeah. And uh, That's you, the majority. Because the, yeah, the, the majority. It's more than Fatah because the remaining votes are spread amongst the other organizations. Right. And if you so look at the majority vote. Right. And if you look at the ideology or the political agenda, more than 90% of the Palestinians, they support the armed resistance. This is what Hamas is uh, representing. Uh, and uh, and uh, they are against the also uh, courts and against the PA. So we can say that they have deep roots in the uh, uh, Palestinian uh, society to so to uproot Hamas from that this is an impossible impossible mission. What can be done? This is the question. What can be done? Well, definitely, what can be done is the, uh, to eradicate all the uh, military wing of uh, Hamas, uh, which is uh, concentrated in Gaza City and the north of Gaza Strip. This is what Israel is now trying to destroy, uh, and they are hiding. Uh, in underground, in tunnels, 
and uh, not only they, uh, the, the, the terrorists themselves, uh, but also the, the rockets, the missiles, the drones, and the, the workshops where they manufacture all these weapons are all underground. I'm sorry to interrupt you again. That is an important point for our audience to understand, because I personally have received probably dozens of questions on the subject, um, if not more, and, and I'm sure everyone else is. When the world looks on and they're saying, well, why did Israel ask the, or warn the Palestinian population in Gaza, move south of the Gaza River? Why did they, why did they warn them, say, leave that northern area? And I think you just gave the answer to that question, that most of the strength of Hamas is concentrated in that northern area, in Gaza City, in and around the northern area of the Gaza Strip. And so when Israel says move south, really what it's saying is that that's where we see the concentration of power and that will be our first focus. Correct right. me if I'm wrong. If, if I may just add to that, to what you said, which is absolutely true. This, uh, in this area of uh, north of Gaza Strip, the uh, city of Gaza and the north of it, we're talking about more than 1 million Palestinians who are living there. In different communities, different uh, uh, buildings. So, uh, in order not to uh, injure or kill innocent Palestinians who are not involved, who are not connected to Hamas, Israel is calling them since the second world of, uh, day of the war. I think that uh, it was Prime Minister Netanyahu, the first one who stood up and yeah. called the Palestinians on the media to go back, to go to the south of the Gaza Strip. Israel does not want to call uh, to kill innocent Palestinians. So this is why the Israeli army is calling them to go to the south and leave these areas vacant. So once the Israeli army invades Gaza, the north of Gaza, the soldiers will know that every Palestinian who is seen on the ground belongs to Hamas and is not an innocent civilian. This will make the war easier for the IDF and also will save the life of innocent Palestinians. I, I just have to clarify that just for the purposes of, of, of international law and the laws of war, the fact that we've called and warned everyone to go south doesn't necessarily allow us to assume that everyone there is, is, is a terrorist. So there still needs to be caution, and the IDF knows that I'm not, I'm not uh, um, creating something new or, or, or coming up with a new idea. That's something which the IDF knows, but it gets rid of most of the civilian population, and 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 that's really um, the critical and dominant uh, um, idea. Okay, now uh, another thing that I, I forgot, forgot to mention is that uh, in 2006, uh, Hamas uh, won the elections for the Palestinian, uh, even in Ramallah, right? Even in the Fatah stronghold, the legislative uh, council, which is the Palestinian parliament, parliament. So this shows you. The power of Hamas, yeah. and uh, they won in the election when uh, Mahmoud Abbas did not uh, was not willing to cut the cake with them of, of uh, the controlling the Palestinian. They made a coup d'état in 2007 and took over the Gaza Strip through a military act, violent, and they kicked out the Palestinian Authority. So I actually argue that it's the opposite. The person who did a coup d'état was Mahmoud Abbas. <laughs> Hamas was elected also in Gaza. Yeah, but he, to the parliament, he, not he, the, he, the presidency. He threw them, they didn't take the presidency, yeah, they took right. the parliament. He threw them out. He uh, uh, deposed Ismail Amir and as the, the prime out. minister. And, and so Hamas took what, what, from an internal Palestinian perspective, yeah. was just their rightful place in Gaza, which they should have had also in Judea and Samaria, were it not for the interference of of uh, uh, Mahmoud Abbas. I think that's an important, yeah, yeah. I believe that's an important point. Yeah. Uh, and another point is that uh, on May 2021, uh, when the operation of uh, Guardian of the Walls, the Israeli operation Guardian of the Walls as a result of an attack by Hamas with the rockets on Jerusalem, uh, uh, the result of this uh, uh, round of fighting was that the popularity of Hamas increased in the West Bank, not only in Gaza, in, in Judea and Samaria. Why? Because uh, Hamas uh, managed to present uh, itself as the defender of Al-Aqsa Mosque. And let's remind everyone why that war started, because 10 days prior, Mahmoud Abbas had cancelled the elections that he'd been talking about for four months, right. and everyone had been getting ready, and the international community, specifically the European Union, had donated 5 million euro 
to the Palestinian Central uh, um, Elections Committee and for and for refurbishing the, the Palestinian parliament all down the drain when Hamas decided if you cut us out of the elections, so we're going to fire rockets. Okay, now uh, let's be uh, practical and uh, we're talking about uh, the question whether it's uh, possible to eradicate the power of Hamas. And we already agreed that uh, uh, the military power of Hamas can be eliminated and the, uh, uh, the missiles, the tunnels, and other, everything can be eliminated by the IDF. The uh, uh, military uh, uh, leadership can be killed. This is possible. These are all possible tasks. Uh, but uh, this requires a very big uh, military operation in Gaza Street uh, with the support of the United States. Now, there are other measures that uh, can uh, be done, uh, can be taken uh, care of to, uh, to weaken the Hamas ISIS uh, movement, not only in Gaza Street. Uh, I have a few suggestions, I'll make it uh, short. Uh, uh, the, the first uh, suggestion is to, that Israel will initiate uh, an international diplomatic campaign against Qatar, which is hosting the leadership of the Hamas in Doha. This yes. is very important. And, uh, the second uh, thing that I suggest is that the Israeli Mossad, uh, uh, who chased uh, the leaders of Black September, who, who killed the uh, Israelis uh, athletes in, in Munich, if you remember, yeah. uh, and the Israeli Mossad chased them all over the world for many years and eliminated all this uh, leadership of the uh, Black September. So this uh, Hamas, Black October, I call it, Black October leadership should be eliminated also by the Israel Mossad. This is important, this is possible. And uh, another thing that should be uh, done by the Israelis, Israel controls uh, Judea and Samaria. They should, should arrest all the leaders of Hamas in uh, Judea and Samaria. This is under our control, security control. Arrest them and deport them. This is all, uh, also very important. And the last uh, step that I think uh, should be done is that Israel will demand uh, from Turkey to close down the offices of Hamas in Istanbul. They have uh, in Istanbul a, a branch of the military wing of Hamas, which conducts terror act activities against Israel. They are directing from Istanbul in Turkey. Israel have been demanding for uh, 10 years already from Erdogan uh, to, uh, to close down the offices and he refuses, but this is the time the international atmosphere is, is now the right time to use it against Erdogan and make sure that they close down these offices. Without question, Yanni. I think that, that what needs to be adopted, at least from a practical point of view, um, this is Dan's idea, obviously, uh, um, not mine, just uh, um, for our audience. We need to adopt for the Gaza Strip, even after eliminating the Hamas leadership, um, a, a, a version of a Marshall Plan, in the same way as um, the world denazified Germany after the right. after the Second World, World War. Yeah. That's what needs to be done also in the Gaza Strip. It needs to be under Israel's control. It cannot be under um, the control of the Palestinian Authority. And that's something um, which needs uh, um, obviously to be thought out, promoted to see how exactly we implement that idea. What is the best way to do it? How is the best way to do it? Um, on the one hand, as regards uh, Jalan Samaria, and the Hamas leadership in, 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 in Judea and Samaria, I, I think that some of uh, um, the Hamas leadership has already been arrested. Um, they are already in prison. Uh, Abdelaziz Gwet, um, who was meant to be the head of the, of the, of the parliament um, from, from Hamas, was again arrested, um, I saw just two days ago, and other senior Hamas um, leaders have also uh, um, been arrested. The question is now what to do with them and how to and how to follow up from here, um, also from the restrictions of international law and, and, and how much that should, I think the should be taken into account. I think the international atmosphere today is for Israel and they understand this massacre of Hamas ISIS. And uh, I think that Israel should be for them and the world will not prevent Israel from doing that. So we should take advantage and uh, hit the, the iron while it's uh, hot. Uh, with a hammer, a strong hammer, and deport them from the... Where, where, where do we send them? Lebanon. 
So Lebanon, Lebanon, Lebanon hasn't got, we haven't got enough enemies there already? Yes, yeah, so, but you remember Prime Minister Rabin and how he deported uh, a few uh, hundred Hamas next to the city. But, but we know that, 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 that deportation to Baal Jazur, if I'm not mistaken, right. in, in 1992, after a terrorist attack, bred most of the Hamas leadership because the next thing was the Supreme Court. Because we, Court. Because we let them back in. Exactly. That's the problem. The Supreme Court. Blowing them out is easy. No, but this time they will Can we back. keep them out? That's a... That's that's an interesting discussion also um, in uh, there must be a legal in, in international law. You are a lawyer, so there must be a legal way to do that. So, so that's a discussion that that, that 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 isn't simple in any way, shape, or form. Nothing is simple. But, but war, it, war is not simple. War is not simple, and the massacre wasn't simple, and there has to be consequences from that action. Um, and 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 really, I would think about it. it, it there are all different types of ideas that are, that are, that are being thrown up. Um, the Israeli media was reporting, for example, um, I'm sure you saw it, that immediately after the massacre, there was a discussion in the, in the, in the cabinet to carry out a substantial move. Um, in the end, it was decided um, to, to... It's to, under censorship. It, it's, it's under censorship, so you can't talk about it more than what has already been said, that there was a, a, a suggestion made. It was supported by the military and security institutions. And the defense minister. And the defense minister. And, the rejected. and, and, and then the prime minister rejected. No one really Stop. knows exactly what that move was. I think that in the next podcast. We, we, but maybe in the, we'll talk about in, it, in the next think. podcast we can yeah. talk about it. Let's take a few uh, uh, questions uh, um, just on, on the way, Yoni. Um, Howard Caspin uh, 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 asked, would it be inappropriate, inappropriate for an American Jew to visit Israel at this time? I can give my personal answer, absolutely not. Um, Howard, this is the time to come to Israel. This is the time to show your support. This is the time for Jews around the world. And, and I know my wife would kill me for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is the time to make Aliyah. This is the time to come home to the Jewish ancestral homeland um, from around the world. And whether it be times of war, whether it be times of peace, um, this is uh, at the time. Is that um, uh, from Lee's Corson? Isn't a, a way to eradicate Hamas to create a new narrative about Hamas lies and harm uh, uh, the Gaza and rather than their benefit? Yes, of course, Lee. That's part of what we're discussing now. We don't have to create a new narrative. Hamas is bad for the Gaza population. Hamas is killing the Gaza population. Um, their, their genocidal goal to destroy Israel um, is bringing a disaster on the Palestinian people in Gaza. Um, the and Gaza are hostages in the end of Hamas. And the Gaza, exactly. They, they, are, they, they are hostages. I, 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 I would caution to words to use the word hostages in these days because I think it's different than hostages that they're okay. holding. But, 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 but that's definitely the idea. Um, from uh, Robert Goldberg. Are there any examples of what eradication of the Hamas infrastructure would look like? For instance, what happened to ISIS and Iraq uh, uh, in, in Iraq and Syria? Yes, yeah, we should uh, uh, we should destroy all the tunnels in the Gaza Strip where the Hamas is hiding. We should uh, uh, destroy all the uh, 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 workshops to to manufacture the, the missiles and the rockets and the, and the drones. And uh, we should kill those terrorists. Without just kill them. Those who are hiding in the tunnels and those who are fighting against Israel who are armed terrorists that have been training for many years to kill Israelis like they did in the massacre, they, they all should be killed, exactly like ISIS fighters or terrorists. This is what's required now from, from Israel's ground operation in, in, in all practicality, to go centimeter by centimeter, inch by inch, uh, foot by foot, scouring the ground in Gaza, finding all of those tunnels, destroying them and destroying entirely that infrastructure. It's going to take time. It will not be easy. And there will be, unfortunately, a price to pay also. Um, but only that systematic destruction of, of Hamas and its capabilities will ensure that in, in, in two years' time, in five years' time, and in 10 years' time, we don't revisit the same massacre right, again, right. because that's what happened. will happen if we don't take this opportunity now. Um, this to, is a golden opportunity to act now. Exactly that. Um, uh, Ruven Hoch, uh, thank you for your question. 
Why would the leaders be deported and not arrested? What are the restraints of international law? So I can tell you like this, uh, Ruben, um, in 2006, um, I was uh, um, the deputy head of the prosecution for Judea and Samaria um, when Gilad Shalit, was, uh, our soldier, was kidnapped and two soldiers were, uh, uh, were killed on the southern border by Hamas as well. Um, we arrested at the time all of the Hamas leadership, unfortunately, and this is a tremendous difference between the American judicial system and the Israeli judicial system, including the military law. Every single one of that Hamas leadership has been released since then. They received punishments which were, I would consider to be really a joke. They received punishments of two and a half to three and a half, maximum four years in jail, arrested in 2006. By 2010, they were out even before Gilad Shalit was released. The limitations, the restrictions of Israel's legal system are unfortunately uh, um, something which is so, in, so entrenched within Israel's legal system that it is impossible to, to, to make that change without a really a drastic change in Israel's legislation. That's something which I personally have been promoting for the last few years, um, that Israel adopt a new criminal code for terrorists. The situation at the moment says that a judge, the, the Knesset sets the, 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 the jurisdictional limit, the highest limit of punishment for any convicted offender, and a judge within that and up to that limit has almost complete and, and, and total jurisdiction as to what punishment is handed down. I believe that Israel's judiciary has constantly failed in its mission to deter terrorists. Um, and now the, the legislature has to step in and say, we're going to change the system. We're going to adopt a, conti a continental system and even take advantages and examples from the American system. Like America has a three strike rule. If you're convicted for a third time, basically of certain offenses, they basically throw the key away. I've seen in court, I've stood in court personally with terrorists who were convicted for the, the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time, every time graduating to more uh, uh, serious offenses, no one's throwing the key away. That is a failure of our legal system, which, uh, um, which I can say personally, I, I, I was head of the prosecution in Judea Samaria for, for a few years, and uh, um, I made those suggestions, but unfortunately they were rejected. And, and I can only say that I personally have failed to, to, uh, um, to promote that uh, um, idea to a sufficient level. But hopefully that's now one of the things that will also change. This is the way to deter terrorists. We're going to wrap it up or? Uh... So I think that's, a, that's okay. it for now. We have no more questions. As uh, Dan would always say, um, as part of his closing comments, we do all this work as part of our mission to, uh, um, to support Israel. That mission requires support, and we do request that everyone who can um, support the, the, the JCPA, you can contact us via diker at JCPA, which is Dan's uh, um, email, D-I-K-E-R, or via my email, M-A-U-R-I-C-E, at jcpa.org. Um, and any donations, obviously, will be happily received and and you can join us as partners in this mission to to help defend and promote um, Israel and uh, to uh, um, to beat the, the the terrorism that that we are facing at the moment thank you very much uh, um, join us tomorrow again at four o'clock Israel time um, eight o'clock in, in New York nine o'clock in New York excuse me I'm, I'm, I am nonetheless British um, nine o'clock in New York uh, uh, um, much earlier uh, in, on, on, on the West Coast um, and for more